Diodes are wonderful little things that are used to, amongst other things, make sure that voltage doesn't go the wrong direction. They're used to rectify a signal to either remove negative voltage or flip it around to make it positive again if you're using something like a full wave rectifier, like you'll find in power supplies. Now, unfortunately, there is waste involved because a diode has a forward voltage drop, which means power is being thrown away, and it reduces your maximum output voltage by that voltage drop. You can get diodes with smaller drops as low as 0.2 volts, Schottky diodes, I believe they are, and the downside to that is they're weaker, they can't sustain the same backwards voltage, so you don't use them in power supplies. But I'm not talking about power supplies today, I'm talking about signals. And signals are generally very weak anyway. You don't care about the current going through, and they're not gigantic voltages. So any old diode would do. But what if 0.2 volts is still too much? What if you want zero volts? Well, there's a trick. The ideal diode, if you add an op amp. Now, it's not magical. You actually do need to power the op amp with a voltage higher than your maximum signal. So the extra voltage is not coming from nowhere. But as long as you can supply that extra voltage, then you can get the behavior that you want. So let's say that we have a double-ended power supply so that we have positive and negative voltage. Let's say that the power supply is plus and minus 5 volts and the signal is only ever going to be plus or minus 3 volts. So we have the headroom to spare. So here's the signal. And if we wanted to rectify it into an output, we just hook it up into a diode with the output relative to ground and done no negative voltage, but the positive signal is dropped by a certain amount. And it's dropped regardless if the signal ever goes to positive. If you have 3 volts here, even if the supply is 5 volts, you're still going to lose your 0 0.7, 0 0.2 volts or whatever. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. Now it's time for the ever magical op amp. So let's give our voltage to the op amp. We still need a diode because the op amp is not a diode. It's going to manage the diode. So there's the diode, and we have our output relative to ground. Let's have a resistor also grounded, and this gives the op amp a path to control the voltage. So the op amp output through the diode, through the resistor to ground, because the diode only ever has a static drop. So we need the resistor in this path to be able to control this, the output voltage. And in fact, this is our negative feedback. So the easy way to remember how an op amp works when there is no gain involved, when it's unity gain, in this case non-inverting, it always wants to make both inputs equal. It cannot control anything except its output, and its output is connected to its inverting input. So the non-inverting input is going to make the op amp change its output until its inverting input is the same as the input signal, but it's going through the diode. So generally, the op amp is going to turn up its output voltage to cover the diode's voltage drop so that after the voltage drop, the output is correct. If the signal is zero, then the op amp doesn't have to do anything. It'll just put out any voltage that doesn't turn the diode on. If the diode is not conducting, then this is a pull down resistor. So both the signal and the inverting input are seeing zero through this resistor. So at zero signal, the op amp is just not turning the diode on at all. At any input that's greater than zero, a positive voltage, the op amp is going to turn its output up until the diode is on, and then there's enough supplied after that. So it'll be the output through the diode through the resistor to ground, and the resistor is going to have the output voltage. But what if the signal is negative? Well, in order to have a negative voltage on the non-inverting input, you need a negative voltage on the inverting input so that their difference, one minus the other, is zero. So the op amp tries to turn down, and remember the op amp is supplied with the positive and negative voltage, so it is putting out a negative voltage. So it tries to turn the voltage down and down and down and down and down and down, because if you have ground here through a resistor, through the diode to a negative, that would work but the diode blocks the negative voltage. So the op amp is going to turn all the way down to the negative rail, but it's still not going to turn the diode on. So it's going to sit there trying and trying and failing, all frustrated that it cannot satisfy itself, but it's going to keep it low. It's going to keep that voltage output low, keep this diode off, and so again, we have the pull-down resistor situation. So that's the simple principle. Anytime you have a positive voltage, the op amp drives the diode on and then controls the voltage with the resistor. And anytime the voltage is not positive, the diode is off and it's a pull-down resistor. So 
Behaviorally, it is a perfect diode. The full behavior of a diode with no drop, as long as your signal never goes up towards the rail. Let me show you. I'm going to use my two power supplies to provide plus and minus five volts. I'm using a potentiometer as a voltage divider to supply the input signal voltage, and then everything's just like it was on the board. The diode and the resistors and such don't matter. It's just the details of what voltages you can reach, what they can withstand, and so forth. The point is, it's a resistor, it's a diode, it's an op amp. This voltmeter is going to read my input voltage. Right now, the potentiometer is putting out 0.51, 0.52 volts. This one is going to read the output. It's reading the same. Good news. If I turn the input voltage up, the output voltage goes up. And so we can see that as I change the positive voltage, the input and the output are matching. There is a delay, of course, and the quality of your op amp, I believe it's called the slew rate. The better the slew rate, the faster it'll change. So you just need to get a slew rate that's fast enough to handle the highest frequency of signal you're gonna put through it. So, there we go. Now, one thing is if I keep turning it up and up and up, at about 3.14 volts, it stops because my op amp is a cheap one. It's a discount op amp, so it can't go to the rail. If this was a rail-to-rail -rail op amp, we would go all the way up. So as long as I keep it low enough that I don't exceed the required headroom, it works perfectly fine. And then if we go down towards zero, we can get closer and closer, and now, no matter what negative voltage I give it, all the way to the rail, anything, it is exactly zero. If I am very, very careful, I can turn this 0 0.10, 0 0.09. This is not a precision potentiometer here, but I've got it down to 0 0.08, which is about the limit of my finger with this screwdriver. 0 0.08 volts, and even this close to zero, it's giving us the exact result. Just for fun, instead of measuring the output, let's measure the output of the op amp. 0 0.08 volts input, and the op amp is putting out 0.44 volts, see? So 0.44 minus 0.08 is about the voltage that the diode is dropping. I'm using, just for reference, 1N4148 signal diode. So look up that data sheet and you might find a graph that makes sense. But the point is, it works. That is an op amp precision diode. So obviously you want to be careful. It's not a diode, it's using a diode. So you can't just put a little magic box around it and slap it anywhere you'd put a diode. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So this precision diode works perfectly as a half wave rectifier. What about a full wave rectifier? Not for power. You're going to spend more power than you save if you try to do this to reduce wastage in a power supply. If you're really concerned about wastage in a power supply, use a very high quality switching power supply. But for a signal, oh, now we have an idea. An idea for next time. So I'll be seeing you.